the representative of the Team Sportscast Network. Cool. <laughs> you sound like a radio personality. I mean, it's your natural. Well, that's really what I do at the Team Sportscast Network is, is I put shows together. I've had several shows. One of them was called The Bridger and Harlock Show, which was a uh, general talk show. I also had another show called Alpha Counter, which is sort of an homage to Street Fighter Alpha. It was also a general talk show where it was kind of random at times, not a whole lot going on. And uh, I've also done uh, match casting for uh, Warcraft 3, for Call of Duty, for Counter-Strike, for Quake 4, for Quake 3, Unreal Tournament, um, and uh, various other games therein. Uh, I recently did some stuff for Project Gotham Racing 3. I'm going to be doing stuff for uh, Gra. If that's uh, if you guys don't know what Gra is, that is Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. Oh, and okay. We're, we're really trying to break into the console market a, a lot more. Uh, especially on the 360, but I'm trying to get my manager to uh, accept the PlayStation 2. Okay. Um, I, I'm guessing that, uh, well, well. Uh, for, first of all, I wanted to say uh, thank you for coming on the show, first of all. Uh, oh, that's not a problem. Um, it's, I mean, I am, I'm still a little bit in shock because, you know, it's the first time that someone has actually taken, you know, taken an interest in the show, you know. Um, it's, it's great to, to see that I'm, you know, that I made an impression on someone. Um, yeah, the PlayStation 2 is is um, is has a lot of things going for it right now, with the most notable being the upcoming Capcom Collections or Capcom Collections 2 uh, with Super Turbo, which is going to be, according to the person that's working on the game, it's going to be arcade perfect, which is going to be which is a big thing for the fighting game community. Right. Um, and so that being, huh? that being Serlin. Right. Serlin has actually been on the Alpha Counter Show. Oh, and really? Richard Harlock Show as well. Really, I didn't even know that. Small world. <laughs> um, I just interviewed him um, about about three weeks ago. Um, I'm going to be posting that up. He, he was, he's a great guy. I, I, I love talking to him. And in fact, I think I did a three-hour interview with him. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so it's been great. But for all the audience members that are listening right now, they probably want to know um, why did you exp display an interest in as far as Alphys and Radio is concerned? Well, okay, the Team Sportscast Network is mm -hmm. it, its exactly what it sounds like. It's a team sports network, and we do much more than just team sports. We do one-on-one -on -one games. Most of our exposure has been through PC gaming because, to, to be quite honest with you, PC gaming is where a lot of the money's at because, unfortunately, fighting games haven't gotten a lot of exposure. Right. Last year, in the 2005 season, the Cyber Athletic Professional League for um, a game called Painkiller actually put down one million dollars for a world tour. Okay. Wow. Which uh, a couple of players, one player that I know that you would probably know, Jonathan Wendell, also known as Fatality, walked away with close to half a million dollars. Wow. Okay. So that's the kind of that's the kind of money that's going to uh, PC games right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Big, big, big money. That's the kind of thing that I want to expand towards fighting games. But okay. unfortunately, fighting games in the arcades, especially here in the United States, as you know, are dead. Now, there's no such thing as a really an arcade anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, I go to the arcade and what do I see? I see uh, D DDR. I see you know various other games, but but not really any uh, any fighting games anymore, especially in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as fighting games go, I come from a Tekken background and more recently a virtual fighter background, and I'm part of the uh, Southern California virtual fighter uh, community, uh, oh, okay. kind of off and on. But at any rate, that's really the kind of exposure that I want to that I want to give. Now, Sevo, the Cyber Evolution League, is one league for first-person shooters. You also have Cal, which is the Cyber Athletic Amateur League. Mm -hmm. You have uh, HTGN, which is the hostile, the hostile Tactics Gaming Network. You have various leagues, whereas in fighting games, I don't see that. I, I don't see very many leagues. Yes, you, you do have the MLG, okay? Right. But outside of the MLG, you really don't have a whole lot because fighting games don't have the exposure. Mm -hmm. And it breaks my heart. It really does because, I, again, I come from a fighting game background, but the reason that I got into PC gaming was because that's where the audience was, that's where the prize money went, and that's where my exposure would have been as a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Um, I would, I mean, well, it's kind of funny that, you know, this is, 
this is a dream come true. Uh, I mean, because um, just a few weeks ago, I mean, you you knew that Alex Fire was on the station. In fact, he's going to be on here again tonight. Um, he's, you know, he's talking about exposure for fighting games. And I mean, I don't know if you you've heard have you heard um, what's happened this last year at uh, Evolution this past August. But it was an absolute madhouse. I mean, if if it was aired on national television, I think it would have been it would have been uh, it would have been awesome. I think it would got an awesome response. You know, that's the thing I think that separates PC gaming from Street Fighter. You know, from fighters is because with fighters it's much more easier to get into, even though you don't play it yourself. You know, right? And I mean, it, it, like I was saying earlier, watching a PC gamer play Counter Strike or a first person shooters, it really happens so quickly. You can't even see them. I mean, unless it's in slow motion. You can't see what they're doing because they're going so fast, you know. But with fighting games, especially with this Marvel, I mean, it's very easy to see when a guy is on a hot streak or when a guy is getting dominated. And it's it's very easy, and like you just like you're saying, I mean, all it really takes is some exposure, and I think that you know it could be it can enjoy much success in its own right. Right, and and that's again, that's really what I want. It's not that uh, uh, the reason that I came to you was in the, for that intention, and actually. Um, just to let you know, I did talk to my boss. My boss says that he's okay with it. Um, and but what we need to do, though, is is you and I need to set up a meeting with him uh, to talk to him. So just to let you know, right now in front of your audience, that uh, uh, we are very accepting of uh, new content. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> wow. I mean, well, first you know, thank you for wow. That's great news. Um, I know there'll be a, uh, several people that are listening right now that'd be pretty, pretty dang happy. I mean, a lot of people have been waiting a long while for this to happen, and uh, and it, it's finally doing it. Capcom is starting to re-release some of their old fighters, and not just, I mean, and just you know, with Xbox Live, um, hundred thousand downloads for Hyper Fighting tells you there's still a market out there for 2D fighters, you know, you know, and just like music, you know, fighting games, you know, when they're great, they don't really age a lot, you know, you can still play them over and over again. Unlimited replay value. Um, I look forward to you know you know meeting meeting the um, meeting a boss and setting something up because I mean that's I mean I'll, I'm doing this for you know as you, as I said before for the fighting game community not for myself. I mean I love fighting games. I've been around it since I was a kid. I remember going out in a thunderstorm when Super Nintendo uh, when it, when uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo came on Super Nintendo. Went up to Blockbuster, grab it. Me and my brother played it for like nine hours straight. I mean, that was those were the days, and I miserably missed those days. <laughs> yep, I can tell you that I've been kicked out of a few arcades for scamming money off of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, this past Evolution, um, you know, there was a big money match uh, between Duck uh, Duck Joe, who was the Evo 2005 champion. And Sanford, who's widely considered the second best Marvel player in the in the world, behind Justin Wong, and it was you know over six thousand dollars. Actually, it was, it was going to be more than that, but people started running out of money, so it was it was right. crazy. And once, I mean, if you ever get the chance to see the footage of that, you will see how crazy, how infectious the atmosphere was on both sides. Because there's a West Coast versus East Coast rivalry that's going on. It's been dormant for a few years, but it came back really strong this year. And it's, I mean, like I said, if it gets the exposure, I have no doubt that it can succeed. Now, try to imagine not just East versus West, but let's talk country versus country now, <laughs> okay? You know, you get you get large enough. I mean, that's that's really what the uh, uh, the World Cyber Games is about. The World Cyber Games is literally the Olympics of uh, the video game world, specifically for games such as uh, such as Counter Strike, and but also for StarCraft and WarCraft. As you know, StarCraft and WarCraft are gigantic in Korea. Right. Okay? And the Korean market is is uh, huge in fighting games, as is the Japanese market. So imagine you've got U.S. versus Japanese, which I understand that we already have, but now let's say we get it on MTV. Well, there you go. Well, that, okay. that would be great. That would be awesome, actually. So um, I just, you know, I just wanted to come on here. I just wanted to introduce myself. It, it, let the community know what my intentions are, and also that uh, I did I did read your post, and uh, this is very much not a prank, and <laughs> I'm I'm very serious in this, uh, in that I want to get exposure for fighting games, and this is one way to do it. If the community doesn't want to do that, I fully understand, and uh, but I I appreciate the chance to come on air and to talk to you. No problem. I, I could tell you right off the bat. Uh, actually, got it. 
got a call here. One second. Hey, Christopher, how you doing? Yo, what's up, man? Hey, hold on for one second. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I've already talked with Alex. You know, he's very excited about the idea. And, you know, and I really, you know, it's kind of funny, though. I mean, I have gotten a lot of support for a lot of the top players, you know. Doug, Doe, Alex, Justin Wong, you know, these people have always have already been on the show and they really like the show. And so I really do think that the community will embrace it because we, we, we really want to kind of bur burst out the bubble. We're tired of seeing the PC gaming get all the limelight, and you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, I mean, it's, it's great, you know, it's just, but it's just nothing like playing fighting games. It's, I mean, fighting games is a little bit more social than PC gaming, you know, because with the PC crowd, I mean, so there's sometimes they're anti-social, but that's not the case with fighting games. I mean, these people, they play together, you know, sometimes they even, you know, bunk together as roommates. They, they, they see each other, they get, a good, get in large groups together, they have fun, they go out to eat, they dance, they party, they even drink a little bit, but it, it's... It's it's fun, you know. It's a it's a it's a culture, and I you know, and I want to see that. I want people to see that culture, you know, like on MTV as you were saying. Um, so I, I really can't wait to get a chance to work with you guys if it, if it if it all pans out. All right, well, great. Um, unfortunately, I do have to go. My lovely wife has made uh, dinner. Okay. And so I have to go eat, but I will continue to listen to the show and. Um, if anybody has any questions for me, uh, you can email me at, uh, there, I have two emails. It's either Harlock, which is really easy, harlock at tsncentral.com, mm -hmm. or my uh, professional email, which is mcraft, that's K-R-A-F-T, at uh, tsncentral.com, and I would be happy to answer anybody's questions. Cool. All right, well, hey, thanks a lot, and again, I mean, I'm sure we're going to be talking again very soon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. See you, our luck. All right. Bye-bye. Well, there you go, folks. Um, you have it. That was Matt um, Matt Kraft from TSNCentral.com. And it looks like that uh, things might go well. I mean, it looks like that we have to schedule an interview uh, for, with me, him, and his boss. And uh, this, yes, I am recording this, by the way. I am recording this. And um, what do you think about it? Dude, I come from, like, the, the FPS community, so I know what TSN Central is. It's it, there. There's two dominating shoutcast, like, uh, like they, they, sh they uh, like stream games, like Counter-Strike and Quake and all that stuff. It's Radio ITG and TSN. That's, like, the two competing ones. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty big. Only, I like them at all, but the only thing I'm worried about is they are, like... The, like they sent it's not it's pretty censored like radio ITG is re like open about that stuff like they, they can curse and all that stuff like it would change it would, the show would be a lot more serious than it is right now mm -hmm. that's the only thing I'm worried about well okay that was an issue that I brought up earlier and I brought that up in my post on SRK because I am aware that you know when I if I decided to go through with it then I'll technically be considered a, an employee of TSN, you know, they have non-disclosure agreements, and I'm sure they have other agreements as well, just like, you know, any radio host would, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the real world, you know, so, and the question is, am I willing to sacrifice that for, the, you know, for the advantages? I would say yes, if the advantages are what we think it is, I think it's a small price to pay if it means that we get the, we help get the fighting game community out in the mainstream. You know, I know who I know who that guy is. I, was, I used to listen to his show every Saturday. He he loves fighting games. He he's, he plays a lot of Tekken. And I, I like I heard his shows always talking about fighting games and going to the arcade and stuff. And right, right. And I'm and I just and I just think, wow. Um. <laughs> well, as far as me going to Connecticut, I don't know. I mean, I really do. I I, I really haven't made my made up my mind about that. Um, because with this. And in, in, with this particular option before me, I'm, I'm big, I guess I'm going to put all my plans on hold for the time being. I guess um, mm -hmm. before I get in, so I understand um, what's you know what's going to be finalized as far as what the show is going to be about, who's going to be on the show, and so forth. Oh, actually, oh, no, never mind. Matt was calling back for a second, so I guess uh, I could maybe just call me back to that. Um, Dude, but congratulations! That's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty big, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's um, like I said. You know, <laughs> I was very skeptical at first. You know, as of course, because you know, I'm liable to get prank prank calls all the time. But as you can see, it, this is not a prank, and this is very serious. 
You know, yeah, yeah. By, the, by the way, I am recording this. Everyone is wondering. Yes, I recorded this from the beginning because, he, he, you know, he, he very much wants to know how the fighting game community, community feels about this. And and I think that the – I think – I mean, I don't think I was out of place when I said that I think the community will support such an endeavor, you know, if it means, you know, better exposure, you know, for us, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not doing this radio station for myself. As it's always been about the people. You know, um, yes. you know, I gotta. You know, like I said, I want to take this time actually to give some props out. Um, let me give some props out first to Matt for you know for extending me this opportunity. Um, I also want to get a props out to you, Judd. I'm also get a props out to Alex Valle, uh, who was my first guest on the radio station, who's been giving me encouragement. You know, he's been the opposite. Instead of people, you know, instead of, you know, a lot of some of, you know, there's been a couple of people that said the radio show was, you know, was boring some nights and that, uh, you know, and it's always random, you know. But then I get people who are very positive and, t and, like, what I, and like what I do, and I do appreciate that. You know, I mean, we all have feelings, you know. Um, I do take this seriously because the radio show, you know, to an extent is a reflection of me. So... I do care about what people will say about my, my, about the radio show, you know, and I don't think I'm out of place for feeling that way, you know. I think the radio show is great, um, and I think that anything I can do to make the community better, I'm all for it, you know. That's what this is mm -hmm. all about, you know. I can't compete at a top level in fighting games. I don't have that talent. I don't have that gift, you know. But like, I, like I'm always fond of saying is that you can contribute in different ways. And, and to me, I found I think I found a way to contribute a lot to the community. As I tell people all the time, I had so much fun covering Ego. That was that was great. You know, that was just great fun, nonstop. You know, um, and I had a great time. And there's been many nights where it's been really fun on the radio, uh, like with you and with Kai and um, and with Kitty and with Alex and with Duck and. All the other people that have been on the show, it's been fun, you know, and I want to keep this up. Now we get a chance to get it up on even a larger on a larger audience, and I can only think that uh, that'll be great, you know. I think the the thing that we should talk about is what do you think we should talk about if this goes through? If this radio does get move up to being featured on TSN, what do you think we should talk about? Because you have to remember that a lot of people we, we've been speaking so far, you know. And we've been speaking to the audience, thinking that the audience are hardcore fighters, but now we're going to be speaking to an audience where they're not hardcore fighting game fans. So that yeah. means we got to alter material about. We can't be going on and just talk about, ah, oh man, let's talk about um, Cable's counter HVB and Marvel Xbox uh, version that it can uh, that it doesn't work right or you know we can't be talking about anything that's really technical that will lose the audience. We got to talk well, about things that. Are that will appeal to the audience as well, you know. At least at first, you know. Well, the few, well, the, the FPS community, they they can get they can adapt to stuff like we deal with stuff like you get with the fighting game community. Like they deal with the same stuff, like fighting game community does. Mm -hmm. Like just took, like just a couple months ago, right now there's Quake right now. Quake Four is not people. Some people think it's tournament worthy, but a lot of people t uh, more like more people think that Quake Three is like the like the top tier tournament game. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that back and forth thing whether they should use like the game that's that that's hot right now, which is Quake Four, or the game that's most fit for tournament play, which is Quake Three. Mm -hmm. So we're so kind of the same thing with Marvel and how it's 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 with the transition between like the Dreamcast version. It, even the the Dreamcast version is like the top tournament thing, but it's also, you have to deal with, like, the blue screens and all that stuff, that's what, it's yeah. kind of like the same kind of basis. Hey, what's up, Toshin? What's up, Toshin? Hey, what's up? What's up? Not much. What do you think of what's been said so far? Uh, it's interesting, you know, I mean, I'd like to know more about this guy, uh, this guy, Matt, and TSN Central thing, because I'm not, like I said, I keep saying to other people, I haven't played a PC game in, like, over five years, so... I don't know, it's not as big to me as it used to be. But, like, you know, if exposure is always good, so you can only go up. Mm -hmm. I was well, just joking around the channel. If you saw, I, I was just wondering if you knew how to play Chun or whatever, but I was just playing. Well, 
Well, if they do, if they do pick up this thing and it gets big, like, not only they have these shows about different games and stuff like that that they cover the games. 2005, they had this. There was this tournament sponsored. It, I don't know many people know the organization, but the CPL. They, they have most most like first person shooters. Yep. They flew. They flew their radio. They flew their radio to each and every stop. It, they went to Sweden, England, Brazil, uh, freaking China, Singapore, all these places. It was so like if it gets big enough that you see that like if there's tournaments, they'll like. I don't know if it's I don't that's what they do with the other games, but they're pretty cool to see them. like they have like live video coverage and all that stuff. So it's it's a pretty it's a pretty professional organization when it comes to like showing trying to get the stuff to the pe- to the to the people that watch the that listen to the radio station. True. Yeah. Um, you said you were from the FCS community or something or Yeah, I, well, to be honest, I'm still like I I'm I play both. Like I still I know play, you play like, like, Counter Strike. Yeah, I play Counter Strike. I play. I'm playing Quake right now, but I really want to get into fighting games. Like I, that's what I. All, that's all I've been doing lately. I haven't played Quake in like a month and a half. Like since Evo, since before Evo, I've just been like going to show you can reading up stuff, just playing games. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in their channel um, on uh, Game Search. What net? Huh? You're on Game Search right now. Yeah, I'm in their channel. They have 170 people in there. So it's yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm, in there, I'm in there right now. I'm in there right now. You see, I, I'm, uh, I, I didn't know you guys were in Game Search. Search. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm on like four different networks. I'm on like Game Search, QuakeNet, Enter the Game, and FNet. I mean, I'm I've, um, two. Yeah, he told me you know where it was, so I, like, I'm like, oh, okay, so let me go check it out. And yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, do they have 100 and, yeah. They're not they're not many people are talking right now, but they definitely got a lot of people in there. Yeah, most they they don't really talk in there much unless it's like unless they have unless they're like sh- like sh- like freaking casting a contract game or something like that. Then there's people talking in there. I don't know oh, Toshin just ma- messaged me from Game Search. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I've been on here for about maybe an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> you <know>. Hour, <laughs> you know, noob. <laughs> I'm always idling. Uh, Game search. My name's is is judge on this one. I'm still the same here. I got my name for Surge under this. I'll serve. I'm not there for something else, though. I, I support some other people. So, kind of big. man, this is, um... Well, I don't know. I, however you cut it, I think this is great news, you know? Um, Seems to know our insider. I'll give him that. Yeah, he, he, I mean, that was the thing. I was... I was surprised that he knew as much as he knew, you know, um, and so that, I mean, so when he said that he played, when he told me he was part of the virtual fight, I know there's a virtual fight community because there's a few of them, and um, and I remember there was one in, in California, so I don't think the guy was exaggerating when he said that the, that the, he was part of the gaming community, I don't think he was just saying that, I really do think he was, he's a big fighting game fanatic. and so, I mean, I think that this can only be good for the radio show, I mean, I and for the community in general, you know, um, I want to get. I, I'll talk. I'll talk to them um, to maybe the mods about it or on SRK, and maybe I have to talk to the fans about it. But you know, I would like you know to get a lot more people involved in this. You know, I want to get now that we got a chance to get it on the big stage. You know, we gotta. You know, we gotta make sure that we have added participation. You know, I mean, it's just it, the stakes are too high now not to not to participate. You know. Um, I mean, this yeah, is going to be Also, great. at the same time, f- f- like, fighters and, like, I'm not trying to, like, downplay this because this is all cool and everything, but fighters and first-person shooters are way different for requirements. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if Joe's going to push in on this, but, like, for, like, first-person shooters, you got to have the blocks, right? you got to push frames. you got to have top-end video cards and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, gotta, that, like, that's, that's another thing. you got to have, like, sponsorship and everything, and... Yeah, I mean, it's true. Right? I mean, I mean, I know I mean, that's the only thing that 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 kind of. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a noob when it comes to the sponsorship and the political side of it. You know, I mean, I just, I'm just a fighting game fan. You know, that likes to talk about fighting games and likes to socialize with people. And yeah, when it comes to when it comes to computer games, if you don't have 
Well, it depends for like uh, Quake Four. If you don't have a good like two hundred dollar video card, like two hundred dollar freaking processor, at least like a like a computer that's like costs like fifteen hundred plus to at least get it at like max frames and no like la no lag or anything. That's what you have to have when fighting. CRT monitor. To, yeah, yes, yeah, CRT monitor and all that stuff. And my computer can barely play Quake Three and Counter Strike. Uh, I'm like. So, I, I'm, I'm, like, mad that I can't play the games to their max potential, and I can't play to my max potential, but, like, I, the thing I like about fighting games, you just have, what, you have your arcade stick, you have your game, and that's it. And your PS2. And you have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your, well, and your PS2. The only thing you have to worry about is your arcade stick, because it doesn't have, like, San Jose, Mitsu, Hap, whatever, and, that's, and it's, it doesn't really cost that much to, like, change it up. Cost them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Alright, we're about to get Alex on here. Alright. Alex Bly. Yeah, yeah. I Banging the machine. You former US Street Fighter champion. Former. What are you talking about former? No, well, actually he still is. At least to me he <laughs> is. I mean, you know what, well, you might say that Have I'm you not over seen his the nuts, and but bang the dude, the machine? The dude bang I need to huh? see you bang the machine. And, I mean, you know what, people might think I'm over his nuts, but you know the the, the, the fact of the matter is that dude beat Alex, you know, beat Daigo, and he beat Daigo in two different games. That that's props right there. That's yeah. props. He went up there and he took care of business. Oh, dude, when's that interview with um, uh, with yeah, Wolf, with Alex Wolf? That's tomorrow night. Um, that's with yes. Alex and Graham Wolf. Oh, Woo! expect me to be there, man. And on Thursday, oh, spot. I forgot to tell you guys, Thursday Yikes will be on. Nice. So. Ask me about that nice Evo team video that we saw the other, earlier in the week. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, so it's it's gonna it's gonna this is gonna be a fun week. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun week, and and I'm glad, you know, I needed the good news. <laughs> Watching the trailer to Bang the Machine, I haven't seen the whole like. Did it ever come out? No, not mainstream as far as I know. Wizard, or not maybe Wizard, but some of you know in SRK was saying it was going to come out and it didn't come out, and it's kind of like an ultimate limbo because they're like, they're sp the, the studio during like the 9 11 attacks or something like went down and they had to replace it and all kind of random stuff. I don't know the full details, but it was, it was really bad. They didn't get produced, they only saved like a few master copies or whatever. But I was, uh, I want to see it too. Like, I thought it was going to look really cool, you know? Yeah. Alrighty. Just so you know, everybody, Hydra got to the Fancy Star Universe, and he's been playing the shit out of it today. <laughs> Hydra, better come on, Hydra better come on the, like, on the fucking channel. He better come into the radio show and give us, like, a review, like, a full detail review of that game. Yeah, if you could pull him well, off of it, yeah, I want to see you try <laughs> Well, no, no, no. He, he was talking about it earlier. I, I got I, the only information he gave me right is like, apparently like, um, dual welding is very important in the game. For, uh, money is very hard to get. Basically, it's not like it, it's not like everyone that was in the first couple games. Mm -hmm. Like, if you find money, you're very fortunate to find money. Um, what else did he say? So, oh, weapons have meter now. What? What? Weapons of meter. Okay, everything is called like photon art or something like that. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, I remember someone talking about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hold on for a second. I'm finna, I'm finna call. Wait, uh, you mean like your mag has meter? Like kind of like no, how no, your no, mag you had a meter, but now you okay, have. Okay, save it. your. Oops, I didn't meant to interrupt him like that. All right. I'll, I'll wait till later. I'll wait till later. All right. Who is this? Yo. Alex. What up, bro? What's up, man? Nothing much, man. It's, uh, you know, laundry day today. Nothing <laughs> clean, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of uh, what's been said so far? You know what, man? Freaking, I kind of listened, listened to it kind of late because I was uh, outside doing something. Mm. And I, r I rushed in and I... And I uh, Find on like to the radio show a little bit to when he said, uh, you know, it's not a prank call and 
you know, he's just trying to see what everybody's input is in the community. Like, he'll do, he'll respect what the community's vision if he has it and, you know, if you decide to do it or not. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing I heard. I didn't really hear what he said in the beginning. Well, what he said in the beginning was that, uh, yeah, he was not, it was not a prank and that he's a fighting game fanatic and he's part of the Virtual Fighter crew in, Cal in California. Um, and he wants to get the exposure for fighting games the same as, you know, the exposure is for PC games. And um, I, I told you earlier that he has to run it by his boss first. Well, his boss is very open. He already spoke to him, and now uh, we just need to set up an interview. So it looks really good right now, the chances are, uh, that, you know, we'll be able to do something. And, you know, as I told, I mean, I mean, this is, I mean, like I said, it's great news because, I mean, this is what we always wanted. We wanted to move the gaming to mainstream, and now we've got the vehicle to do it with, you know. And uh, I can only, I'm still a little bit in shock, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I hear you. I hear you. Hey, uh, for, first of all, who's watching the movie in the background? That's maybe my TV. Hold up. There we go. My bad. All right, cool, cool, cool. You know, just you know, just making it kind of fair for everybody to listen, because I can barely hear hear Ben. My bad, man. Uh, no, that's cool. That's cool. <clears throat> um, yeah, hey, man. Any any type of exposure is is okay in my book. I mean, um, if he wants to get you on, and um, if you want to, you know, not keep it random, whatever, and we'll have an agenda of what we're gonna have on there, whatever. So be it. As long as we get on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we as a community, we also have to be a bit mature about this this ordeal because, um, you know, once we have more sponsorships, they're not going to want us to act all like jackasses, you know. <laughs> We're going to have yeah. to. <laughs> we'll, the know, I, I mean, we we can we can save it for the stories during the tournament. <laughs> during you know, if you want to speak your mind, there's always the forums. Right. You know, we have fun and we can talk. You know, we can talk smack. I was about to say shit. Man, I can say shit still. We can talk shit all day long <laughs> now still. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think they're much. I don't think that they're much. That that's too much or anything like that. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I, I mean, I, I, it's kind of like I'm kind of prepared because I heard that he, you know, he's still, you know, going to be listening to to your show, the Matt guy, and his wife is probably listening. I don't know, so he might have kids <laughs> around. See, that's. That's the whole thing. I'm I'm prepared for these type of things, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody would be too. Yeah. Um, As, you know, set aside for. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. I was just saying, if I remember correctly, like, cursing is at like it's it's not they used to, but like right now it's at like a low point. Like they don't they really don't like to. They think it, they because they're trying to be as most as professional as they can. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That was one thing I was worried about. I would like mm -hmm. like release like the. Well, okay. I mean, it's. I mean, that's fine though, because to me, like when I go, when I went to my last job, obviously I can't use, you know, I can't use language like that because I was a, I was a floating divisional manager, so I can't be going in just talking, talking like I just came out of a bar. But, you know, but you know, I'm not. I don't mind it at all. I mean, I don't mind that they want to keep it professional. I understand it because, you know, if this really gets big and there's sponsors involved and so forth and so on. Yeah, there's got to be an image that we got to upheld, you know, you know, and I mean that, and that just goes with anything, you know, especially when you're talking about, you know, dealing with money, you know, like I said, with sponsors and stuff. I mean, and you got an image to protect, you know, you know, there's a part of me that's, you know, that's a little bit nervous, you know, because, you know, I've always thought that the radio station was going to be one of those things where it was just going to be a niche thing, that's just something between. You know the the the, the, the 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 few of us in the fighting game community, you know, to do for the other you know other people in the fighting game community. And I really didn't think it was going to get any bigger than that. Okay. I, heck, I didn't even think it was going to get it was going to last more than a week. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I thought that the, that I was going to do this for a couple of days and then stop. I really did. All right, now we got Ski on uh, Ski Sonic on the line. What's up, man? What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to say shit real fast <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we still could do it. Okay. Yeah, we might as well get all the FJs in while we're at it too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. If you got anything to say about... I don't think FJs are ever going to die on SRK Radio. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they're a staple. 
On Alphaism Radio, I'm sorry. Alphaism Radio. Yeah, uh, affiliated with loosely SRK. It can be the running joke. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's yeah, definitely it can be the one of those joke. inside jokes. I'm sure that. Uh, but that shit's not a joke, dog. It's serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, support the movement. Support the movement. Uh, yeah, that's right. I think you know. Right. What? I think if I get a chance to interview like someone that's not in the fighting game community, I'll just, just ask, ask them how so they feel on FJs. Uh, yeah, just ask, just ask <laughs> you like, are you are you a are you a whole soul member of the FJ movement? And they'd be like, what what? Huh? FJs pro or con? Yeah. Um, are you for them or against them? FJs. It, you know. <laughs> I, I, I would, <laughs> just wanted your take on FJs. How did you feel on, what was your stance on FJs, sir? <laughs> a- FJs in the community these days. They're taking over the kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's going to be I cool. I support the moment. Um, but, yeah, it, I think it's going to be really, really cool. And uh, But, you know what? Hey, Alex, you still there? Yeah, I am. All right. You know what? Let me ask you a question. Um, is it possible that if you know if this deal comes out, I want to see if I can arrange as many interviews as I can with all of the top players in the fighting game community? And I don't mean for Capcom 2D fighters. I meant for the 2D and the 3D fighters as well. Do you think you'd be like willing to help me out with that? I don't think you'd have to ask, dude. I'd probably just ask you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, it's. But you know, I think uh, we're gonna do this together. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the answer is yeah. I'd help you out. Oh, all right, cool. I mean, <laughs> then nobody else is doing this, and nobody else is doing this. And I mean, I wouldn't have thought of this. You freaking brought this out of the blue, and it started with what uh, the uh, Alpha Alpha Anthology is that garbage game, you know? And <laughs> but your real intentions was to get out there and just freaking talk about games. Right. And look where we are now. Yeah, look, and just a month later, look at where we are now. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, I think, um, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm still, like, foaming at the mouth at the possibilities of what can really, it could be really something really cool. And I'm, I'm glad that all of you guys are, you know, are here because, you know, like I said, I want this to be a, 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 a good moment for all of us, you know. You know, it's, it might be a something, might be a sort of something really special. And, I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, it, it, I need you guys' help on this as well because now if, if this goes through with TSN, you know, now I really want to get even more people involved as possible. So all of you, if you know people that are in the gaming community that, you know, that want to get on, let me know because, you know, I think that, you know, we want to get as much, exp- we want to get as many names out there as possible. So people all right, I'll go call them DSP then. All right. <laughs> What? Do you ha- have uh, hate hate Wednesdays? <laughs> <laughs> I have hate Wednesdays, uh, Turtle Tuesdays, and uh, let's see here. Meter Mondays. Me- meter Mondays. That's like um, rush that shit down Saturdays. I actually mm. don't think that. I mean, I I, I, sh- I should say never say never, but I don't think DSP is going to be on the radio anymore. Um, I don't. I he has a very very negative opinion of the radio station, so. I mean, I really don't expect him to really, to really be a part of the station anymore. So, you know, which is unfortunate, but then again, hey, you know, that's life. That's life. You know. Hey, hey, hey Ben, mm-hmm. I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree and sort of disagree on that because, just like um, any show, entertainment, mm-hmm. um, he, he, even though he has a negative uh, approach to the community of what he's up to. We unfortunately, just like turtles and just like freaking glitch killers and whatever you call them, we need those people in the community. And uh, honestly, it might not work in the radio, but once in a while it will. Mm-hmm. And the, the way he, you know, the way he sees it, he it, it's all about attention and recognition. That's what he wants. Bottom line. Right. Okay. Right. It, that's it. There's nothing else. I mean, whatever, dude. It's nothing else. And if he's not gonna get on the radio, he's gonna he's gonna talk enough shit because he doesn't get his attention and work another way, <laughs> and then he'll probably battle it out on another radio show. But what all it comes down to is is one big show, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, and and that that fool right there is like the whole like the, you know the whole me versus him. I mean, we talked about this a couple nights in a row. And it's pretty sad, but I'd have to bring it up for the people that haven't tuned in. 
you know. He thought that he could beat me at blah, blah, blah at Super Turbo or AE, and I'm, like, laughing about it. Big fuck, you know, I'm like, whatever. And and since I don't have any logs to prove a, any um, anything that he said over the year, over the course of the year, he said that he's denying the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And once again, it's for attention. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Everybody, everybody bit into it. You know, they're messaging me saying, "Oh, this, he's saying this and he's saying that. What you gonna do about it? You better win, or you better not lose to him." Kind of like back in the days, I can't lose to anybody outside of Cali. You know, we need that fire. You know, how Watson told me, "Hey, why did you, why did you make friends with the enemy? Basically, Nor- NorCal." Mm-hmm. When I freaking truced it up with John Choi. You know, it's like we kind of we need that, and it took me a long time to understand that. Mm-hmm. It really did because I, I really thought we can all play together. But what happens is we kind of let each other go. You know, we have fun with it and we like do it as a team. But individually, <clears throat> you know, we need we need that fire. Mm-hmm. And right. So I mean, that's why I kind of kind of disagree with you. You know, but agree. You know, sort of. I, I don't like his approach either. You know, I'm I'm more kind of more of a assertive type. And I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll give more props than, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll even give props to the cheapest bastard out there because, what, nobody, you know, nobody has the brain to beat the cheapest guy out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, um, I, like I, I will say it again for all those listening, people who have told, to, there's been numerous people that told me that he's a cool guy in real life and that he's met and met him. And I have no qualms with that. I'm not even arguing that. I just said that the way he portrays himself online is, if he's, if it's true what they said about him in real life, is a totally different persona. And you know, people say you can't take him seriously. Well, if I can't take him seriously, you know, then I mean, he's saying first of all he'll say things, and then he'll say I was just kidding or I'm just joking. Uh, but then he'll say something else, and he's like, no, I was serious about that. I mean, there is. In, in the comment that you said about the radio station, that did, that did not. There's nothing in that in that statement that makes me believe that he was kidding around. I think he really believed it. He believed the show you know was what? boring and it's going to die and so forth and so on. And I go, okay, well then that's fine. You know? Yo, I'm glad you, you brought know? that up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people take that's that's what I, that's what I would say. Like people take issue with uh, DSP particularly because he'll say like, oh, I was just kidding. Oh, I baited you guys out. Oh, like. And and, it, and it, like him doing it so much, it just looks like oh well, you know, I'm just like covering covering my ass now because I can say that like oh I said I was gonna like rape everybody, but then like oh like I got fucked up. Well, you know, I was just trying to get you guys to play hard. <laughs> you know, like you always got a fail safe there. Right, right. And that's why I think that's how he was using the situation. So I was like, so I really don't I don't have any hate or animosity towards it because I don't do any good either. You know, I'm just saying I really don't have nothing to say to him. That's, that's basically how I, how I put it right now. I have nothing to say to him, and you can go, go on and do what you choose. If you choose to listen to the radio station, fine. You know, I don't know this. I did not ban him from the channel or anything like that. You know, he can listen if he wants to. If he starts talking stuff, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just not, I just ignore him now. You know, it's just, that's how it is for right now. Hey, hey, check it out. DSP is like, DSP is like the writer at WWE <laughs> for the wrestler that always gets his ass kicked. How's that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, why two jelly? I'm gonna fucking tear you apart and fucking spit your brains out. No! And then he loses and he was all, oh, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh. Actually, this is this is Matt again. Hold on for a sec. Oh shoot! Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click over right quick. Hello. How's it going? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> good, good. Done with dinner. <laughs> um, let me see uh, what I can do here. I've actually filled up the <laughs> the, the Skype thing. Um, let me think. Uh, do you want to do you want to call in, or do you want me to call you? Or yeah, you can actually. If you want to, you can call into the uh, station because I use another program for that. 
Okay. Uh, because I, I, the, all of the, the four slots are filled cause for the conference because they know there's a five limit on it, a five person limit. Yep, yep, I understand. Uh, just go ahead and message me the number. Okay, I'll do that. Alrighty. Okay, that was Matt, and so he's actually going to call into the radio station. Uh, one second. Let me get him. And you know, guys, feel feel free to ask any questions you want. Obviously, you know. He said he plays stuff, Ben. Hmm. He, he said he plays games. Yeah, he, he's a he's an avid uh, virtual fighter Tekken slash Tekken player. I hmm. I got plenty. I got a lot of questions about those games. I hope you I do think. ask them. Oh, bro! I dude, I have. Let's see. At my peak, I was juggling. Fucking. Let's see here. Oh, no. Nine games. Hold up. <laughs> hey, you there? Yep, I'm right here. All right, what's up? How you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. Now, I don't know how many people can actually call you if I'm taking the lineup. Uh, well, I mean, oh, right now I got, well, six people in the line. Five. So, <laughs> you know, so it's all good. Oh, it I is all you. good. No, I'm just uh, just going to join the conversation, if you don't mind, if anybody has any questions for me. I don't know if you've ever heard any of uh, any of my shows. I know some of the people here at the roundtable have. And uh, the one thing that you guys are all talking about and the one thing that you're worried about is randomness and sort of not being able to go off the cuff. And to be honest, if you've ever heard one of my shows, then you know that I dance the line a lot. Okay, that's good. <laughs> That's good. I mean, I mean, I don't mind though. I mean, if it's to the point where, you know, we got to keep it professional. I don't think anyone here has a problem with that. I mean, you know, you know, that's just being an adult. You know, it's some, I know there's sometimes you can speak and sometimes you can't speak. You know, at least not speak what's on your mind. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's just it's cool right. though. So, um, but if you ever do have a chance to, it, it's it's on the uh, on demand. If you ever have a chance, listen to episode. Three. That's probably one of the better episodes that I've that I've done. Episode and, three. Uh, oh, my wife's telling me. Yeah, we call it uh, we we call it episode zero three. Zero okay. three. All right. And uh, what's the name of the show again? It's Alpha Counter. Uh, Alpha Counter. That's kind of funny. Alpha Counter Alphaism. All right. <laughs> Let's see how that works out. Um. All right. Um. You Sounds like a match. <laughs> Yeah, um, you guys have any questions for Matt? Um, you know, feel free to. Hey, Matt, what did you say you played? Say again. What did you say you were pl you played? You said you were a fighting game guy, or? Yeah, yeah, I used to I used to play a lot of Tekken back in the Tekken three days. Uh, Tekken four, as we all know, wasn't the greatest piece of software ever released from Namco, and uh, <laughs> there really was Tekken five. So. Uh, what I did was, is when Virtual Fighter 4 came out, I played a little Virtual Fighter 2, a little 3, uh, but when 4 came out, I really jumped into 4, and uh, 4 EVO, and really looking forward to 5. Okay, yeah, I've, I've heard that too. I heard a lot of people are, are saying good things about Virtual Fighter 5, and I played Virtual Fighter 4 a little bit when it first came out. My friend actually bought the board, you know, he couldn't even wait for the PlayStation 2 release. He bought the board, 3 grand. And I mean, we played it, and it's a great game, but boy, I mean, I have an easier time understanding Revelation in the Bible than learning how to play that game. Because I mean, but speaking of the Bible, you ever seen the manual for <laughs> Virtual Fighter? I mean, it's like three thousand pages. It's like if you ever see like the the, the Fighter's Guide to Virtual Fighter, it, it's 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 thick, you know. But it's a great game though, and I like to see Virtual Fighter. I saw yeah. I got one video, but it's, it's it's low resolution, so I really can't really make out much. They say that Virtual Fighter is the thinking man's fighting game. That would not be my forte. 
because I go all on instinct and I go what's in front of me, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> I know that if I start learning that game, I'm going to get killed. For I it. would argue vehemently with them <laughs> for a long time. They're all thinking man's games, but they're all actually guessing man's games. You can guess your way to victory in every well, fight. You got, yeah, you got to guess. Yeah, yeah. Luck is just such a factor. <laughs> Alex Valle. <laughs> There's no luck there. Alex? Oh, okay. can I uh, can I talk now? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> Just messing with yeah, you. Yeah, get in this. All right. Um, I have actually a, a few questions for Matt. Are you there, Matt? Yep. Hello? Yep, I think there's Yeah, he's there. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um... Like, what's your what's your main background as in, um, I mean, do you have, like, a, a day job, too, or is this this is what you do? <laughs> no, this isn't what I do. Uh, I'm, I do have a day job. Um, okay. So right. I, um, I, I, I can tell you that I'm, <laughs> what I do is um, um, I, I hold three licenses here in California to uh, uh, basically kill things. Wow. wow. Headhunter, huh? <laughs> nice. Okay. And, like, uh, you mentioned that you played, you dabbled with uh, Tekken 3, you know, Tekken 4. I'm pretty sure some of the Street Fighter, um, but mostly in the, it looks like you have a 3D repertoire of, uh, you know, a 3, a 3D game interest. Like, what got you really into those games versus the 2D games? You know, there's a buddy of mine, his name's The Grey Ghost. And um, he was always the Street Fighter guy, okay? I mean, it just anything anything that was Street Fighter, that was it. I used to play Street Fighter 2 back when I was in high school. Like, uh, 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 when I was a, a junior and senior in high school, that's when it first came out. Uh, this, this kid named Reggie, he, he brought his uh, Super Nintendo. And uh, in history class, and I know this is really stupid, but in history class, we would hook it up to the TV that happened to be there, and we would just play Street Fighter all day long. Well, then I sort of fell away from fighting games for the longest time. And uh, at my first job, the place that was next door actually had a Tekken machine, a uh, Tekken 1 machine. And so that's what I played on, and that's what I played everybody on. And so on, I, that's just how it happened. And I, that's how I got into 3D fighters uh, other than 2D fighters is because that's just what I play. Okay, okay. That's Which is what cool. I was really introduced to. Um, and then in college, they had a uh, in college they had a Tekken 3 machine. I couldn't wait for Tekken 3 to come out on the U.S. PlayStation, so I had it imported. And uh, if everybody remembers the old slot trick, um, I used to do the slot trick in order to play my Tekken 3. I imported a Hori stick in order to be able to play it, and well, the rest is history. Hmm. All right. I remember um, back then I uh, actually worked on one of the books for um, the actual Tekken 3 uh, U.S. release. And um, there was, okay. like, some problems between us and um, the Versus Guidebook. I don't know if anybody's done history on it. Um, the way I got into Tekken 3 was I was working at an arcade at the time. And um, from the owner of Tekken's I bought to Castell, his name is uh, Vic, he, you know, jumped in and um, he was doing 10-hit combos, you know. I played a little Tekken 2 as, you know, one of the, the games where, you know, hey, wow, this just play this fun-looking, you know, 3D game. But never really, like, just totally deciphered it. And when Vic was playing this, you know, doing all these fancy little combos, and that's a time where, you know, we're still playing Street Fighter Hardcore. I'm like, hey, let's let me see if I can do some of these combos from Street Fighter to Tekken. You know, and and that's that's how I started really getting into Tekken. Um, did you? Let me ask you this: Did you ever think that, you know, you're hardcore now? Like, you really like your Tekken, and you couldn't wait to freaking to get your copy, so you got to import it. Did you ever try to, you know, enter any tournaments at the time? No, it, that was the one thing is, is I've never actually considered myself uh, a tournament worthy. Um, I I just don't have the dexterity to do it. Okay, I can talk a good game as you can tell, 
And so that was another reason why I got involved in the Team Sportscast Network, because we're the gamers who actually sit on our ass and watch everybody else play. Ah. <laughs> Oh, so, so you're like the the ESPN of video games, huh? Exactly. Like um, I I really respect the uh, professional gaming community. It doesn't matter what mm-hmm. profession it happens to be. Uh, you know, whether it's fighting games, whether it's FPS, whether it's RTS, it doesn't matter. And so I wanted to be a part of that professional community without actually having to play because, unfortunately, if I ever entered a tournament, I'd probably get schooled in the first couple of rounds. Uh, I was able to hold my own in the uh, arcade, and I was able to dominate my local arcade. Like I said, I've gotten kicked out of my I got kicked out of my local arcade numerous times. Um, but as far as uh, national tournaments and things like that, nah, you know, I I really get my ass handed to me. But I I will have to say one thing that if somebody were to go up against me verbally, well, I'd probably hand you your ass. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, so you actually you found your talent, you know, off of something else. I mean, every, everybody has their niche. I mean, they can't take it to the next level, so, you know, they find something creative. Like, they have this creativity of how can I freaking, how, how can I show people what, you know, what I'm worth? And, you know, you found a way. I mean, it's, that's, that's honestly, in my belief, that's awesome. That's good. Because you're, I mean, there's so many players out there that don't know what to do with their, um, their training mode. They're just sitting there, and, you know, you've probably been thinking around, too, like in training mode, trying to do something creative. And, like, man, I wish I could yeah. do this on this guy, but, fuck, you know, I, I I can't beat him. So why don't you just start talking to people of showing how, you know, if you have the same problem. That's why you probably got into the whole spectacle of, like, hey, let's let's talk about how this guy is playing. You know, you probably, the people will probably understand you much, much easier than the uh, gamer himself. Of, of how the mechanics work and how to beat certain people. What is he doing to beat that person? You, you follow me? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely do follow you. Um, you know, it, it was almost like, um, I mean, okay, we had um, we had this guy at, at, at the local arcade, which is the Tilt at the mall, and uh, the Grey Ghost and I, we, uh, uh, we nicknamed him uh, the Cyber Ninja, right? And he actually taught us a lot. I mean, a lot. Because he, any fighting game that he could, that, that he touched, he was just instantly good at. But the thing was, when you played him, he wasn't, he, he didn't teach you. He just destroyed you. Okay? So, I mean, it just absolutely destroyed you. Much like, uh, uh Thomas Osaki. Okay? Just killed you. Right? And, mm-hmm. but, but through that, and through watching him, we uh, we really learned to uh, we really learned to play the games that the respective games that uh, that we played such as uh, uh, such as, as, as Tekken. Uh, it was through him that I learned uh, floats and juggles in Tekken, and uh, well, the Great Ghost just got his ass handed to him, and, and that was the end of that. I see. Okay. Uh, anybody? All right. Anybody else have uh, any more questions for Matt? While I think of some more. I was just going to say, uh, Alex, when you said you went back and started on the book, which book were you talking about? Because I've got, like, all three of them, I think there was. There was, like, the white one, the Namco one, and something else. I forget. Okay. It's a book from Imagine. Um, okay. You know, I'll, you know, I'll talk about what happened there, even though I'm not supposed to. But uh, there's, like I said... Well, if you can, I don't, you know, I don't want to break it, like, an NDA or anything. No, you know, it, it was out there. I mean... Versus Books did a book, and Imagine did a book, and, and Versus uh, said that we did something, you know, we we did the, something that we shouldn't have. I think you put two and two together, but I was the main writer for one of the books, and all the strats were basically my my strats, so it's pretty ridiculous. And um, the book are got pulled strat- off. After- are, you, are, you talking, are you talking the strats that were in the white pages? Um, the strats and um, what we would like have like a gamer lingo. Okay, like, say, say this is kind of ridiculous. If you were to coin a word like um, or, or or phrase like "rush that shit down," and we would use it under one of the combos, and we call it that. They they have like the nerve, you know. Versus had the nerve to like. 
try to challenge our books because we use the same lingo as they did. And it's a word that I used back in the days before, and I, I coined most of those words back in the days or, 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 or tragic or, you know, some of the old school Tekken players. We've, you know, we've, we come up with our own type of words for certain, certain moves. And it's pretty ridiculous. So you can see what can happen. I can't really discuss more than that. And it's pretty ridiculous. So the book got pulled off about, I think, a month after. Just because no one wanted to, you know, really get in trouble for it. Pretty this wasn't the versus or the the primo guide, was it? Uh, it's it's by it's by Imagine Books. I've, dude, it's been like how many years is that? Dude? It's been a couple of years. I know. I just I've got two. I've got the one the white one with the red okay, uh, with the white cover. Okay, there's one. Okay, in Eddie Gordo's uh, section. Like the beginning, okay. one, like there's a um, on, on his intro. It would I remember it saying um, he would spin like the Tasmanian Devil or some bullshit like that. All right. Like he his moves are like the spinning tornadoes. Yeah, I didn't I didn't write that actually. Some like my the actual professional writer did while he was editing all my shit. Cause I'm like I was like 19 at the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but. Yeah, I was that, just wondering because you know there was like a couple guides back then, so I was just trying to figure out which one you know, we were talking about initially. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I was the dude. I was the kid that did all the freaking. I capped every single move and every combo, like as in move after move, and it would connect. I would push pause in the middle of the combo and make sure that it worked in between the combo. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to do that. All I had to know if it connected or not, but I freaking did the. Did the funny work, man. <laughs> yeah. So good times, man. It's just good times. Well, those were old times, you know. Yeah, but it comes to show that you're so young and you're so excited about something that you enjoy. And then all of a sudden, you know, somebody tries to take something away from you or not paying you for something, you know. And you, you're a kid and you don't know what to do. And that's why... Nowadays, through all the experience, you know, like writing books or helping with guides, facts, videos, um, doing some other, like, random radio show or um, uh, just random Internet footage, you know, like, like it's just, you, 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 if you don't know, your shit can be used, you know, copyrighted or something, and you're, you're screwed. You're oh, so for screwed. sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's why. Like, like, there's this lady over there at Evolution this year. She stopped me and she wanted to like interview me. I'm like, no. Nope. She had a video camera. Oh, she's all like, I'm gonna do this for like this class or something, whatever. Probably from game trailers. It was probably from the, yeah. the girl from game trailers. Well, it, no, it, it was just one like kind of. She looked kind of middle aged, you know, a middle aged woman, and she had a camcorder. Oh. And you know, I don't. Seriously, if that's just not on paper or whatever, I'm not going to be on it. You know, I don't, I mean, you you see what people can do to you on, like, online. They can put your picture up there and exploit you in some ways, and that's, like, one of the worst things. You, you get exploited. So I don't want any of that happening. And yeah, it's different from, hard. like, fan, like everybody going around, like, what filming casuals and stuff to, like, like you said, the game show lady who goes goes around, you know, for a big company or whatever, and you don't know what it's for. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be random exactly. or, oh yeah, like if I came yeah. up to you and you didn't know who I was because we've never met face to face, and I'm like, yo, what's up? And I'm get, I got the camcorder. It's like you don't know what I'm doing, right? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, what the hell is it? And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some. There's some people that I know, and they have school, the actual school projects, or you know, they're doing a little documentary that's for the community. It's the people that I know. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll help them out. You know, th plead their case, have it uh, in their forums uh, beforehand, and I'll go out there, I'll step up, I'll, you know, I'll help them out. Random people, yeah, come on, dude. I mean, if you if you know the community, and you know, you have the nerve to go up to somebody that is pretty valuable to the community or is a big name or it could be like an organizer like the Canons or something I don't think he would let himself be filmed like that no way or Wizard or or even um, 
Vic from Tekken Saibatsu. I doubt any of those guys will let any random person with a camcorder film them. Hell no. <laughs> oh, no doubt. Yeah. Well, what's funny is, like, you take the Team Sports Cast Network, for example. We've gone to multiple countries to cover multiple events. And uh, one thing that we have players sign before, uh, before we uh, ever take them or even have uh, their likeness up on, the, uh, up, up on our site is, is we have them sign a release, okay? So they know exactly what we're going to use it for. And, uh, I mean, I can, understand, I can understand exactly what you're saying. Um, you know, you take, you take anything. You need a release form. You need some kind of form that uh, you, you know exactly what, what it's going to be used for. And, I mean, there is a lot, there's a lot of content out there uh, that can be used for, uh, for evil. And the one thing that uh, the one thing that Team Sportscast Network does is because we're an LLC and because we have copyright, you can be you can rest assured that anything that is going to be on our station is going to remain on our station. And if it's not, well, then it's lawyer time. Right. Yeah. Mo- most pro- like prof- you know everybody that keeps it professional, like even your company, they will have a release. You know, I've, and Evil had. All the players, while signing up, signed a release because there was some, you know, there was going to be some uh, video footage that was going to be recorded over there. So, yeah, but that's for the DVDs, right? Uh, you know what? I don't. Or was that for something else? Well, yeah, I don't, have the paper. Like... I don't have the paper in front of me unless you have a photographic memory. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Oh no no no! Because like you know, I'm on, I'm on this end right, and I didn't know I should go to Evo, but I I understood somebody, you know, was saying you know, like on the forum somewhere on some random thread, right, that everybody had to sign a release, and like it kind of made sense to me because, you know, every year they do the DVD, right, or they you know everybody just buy the DVD, you know, except for like last year, but like for 2002, 2004, whatever, and everything that's with like the footage that everybody records, right, like Wizard said. You can't record, you can't release this footage because it's either you know finals, big screen, or it's going to be on the DVD. So that's stuff you can't release because they want to make the money off the sales. You know, which is understandable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. You know, that all that stuff is fine. That's we, we should know about that. You know, they're they're not random. The point is, is somebody coming up to you out of the blue and wanting to record you. That's the only, yeah. that's the only thing. You know, I, I, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> hopefully, though, it's I, I, I've said this before, but hopefully that next year um, I'll be able to do the radio station from Evo, um, live from Evo. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, because actually, we were discussing that. I mean, uh, this is another example of how this could really work. Is that uh, one of the hur- hurdles we had was like, how can I broadcast it? <laughs> from inside of Evo because people can barely get a radio, uh, a cell phone signal in there. And now you're trying to do a broadcast over broadband, you know, from, I, mean, I didn't know how I was going to do it. But, you know, if, it, if, you know, this alliance with TSN will allow me to cover Evo or cover other major tournament events um, that involves fighting games, I mean, that would be great. I mean, I can, I, can, I can only think of it, you know, the exposure that could be, that could result because of that, you know. Yeah, and well, and maybe Matt can explain what that means. Okay. Like what Matt would like, he says he goes to different countries and such. I mean, if he could like elaborate, like on what kind of setup they use to kind of like present these things. You know, is it like a big, t- big setup that they use? Or I mean, I took film and a little bit of radio course in school, right? So you know, I just want to get a picture. What I did, what I did was, is I just um, <laughs> if you want a picture of exactly what we do and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, I I can't get onto FNet for some bizarre reason. I just I can't do it. But what I did was okay. I I just posted a picture um, to uh, Bunkai as right. far as what our setup is. Okay, and this is in Dallas. All right, just to show you in Dallas, this is the uh, this is the player lounge section where everybody's watching the games all on the big screen. You see the sky. There's a sky bridge. Okay where all of our setup is on the sky bridge, all right? And uh, what, we, what, you know, what we have is, is we, have, uh, we have a camera crew, okay? We've got a mixer crew. Oh, that's tight, man. Of course, we've got, you know, the production. 
uh, production people and things like that. So if you just, if you just take a look there, you can see exactly what it is. And then if you want to repost that into AppNet, because again, I just can't get an AppNet. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay. You have like a little catwalker above bleachers and such. That's why I want to be up there. <laughs> This is in Dallas. Wow, this is cool. This looks. That's very nice. What? What? I'd be like, oh, the reversal dragon punch from Valle. Oh, and the crowd goes wild. Uh, I can only, I can imagine. <laughs> oh man, that would be great. Um, I mean, because you know what? The thing about it is, I would have loved to, um, to have um, been there mm. for the Duck versus Sanford match at Evo and uh, and done it live, and people can see the crowd and the reaction. And, I mean, cause I was like, that was one for the ages right there. You know, you really can't convey the feeling of something like that, you know, without being there. But at least if you were to see it, it'd be like, great. You know, they could get, at least get an example, get an, an idea of how, how passionate people can be about these games, these fighting games. Hey, guys, I've got to uh, take care of some laundry real quick. I'll probably call back in a little bit later. Okay, right. cool. Thanks, Alex. All right. Wait. Right, so, Matt, did, did you guys just do the radio setup, or did you have TV setup as well, or I'm just trying to figure out from the, the picture. Yeah, yeah, we we have a radio, we have both a radio setup and a television setup. Uh, what was being broadcast on the uh, what was being broadcast on the large screens are uh, or was our um, our feed and our broadcast. Uh, let me find another picture for you. Uh, okay, just give me one quick sec here. It was oh, 2005. Was it winter? Um, you know, just to let you know, at at the uh, at winter, okay. And actually, if you uh, if you go to our on demand, and uh, then you go to the CPL World Tour, and uh, it's still even up there, the winter, which is the or the World Tour Finals for 2005. Um, we were actually there, and MTV took our feed and broadcast it on MTV. Really? Now, yeah. What part is that under? Is that under the gallery? Like, I'm just trying to browse through the webpage while I do this. I remember um, no, watching it, that on MTV. Under, I remember seeing that. It's actually under the on demand. <laughs> if you were to go to the, uh, if you were to go to the on demand. Okay. Uh, then what you can see is you can go you can go under the uh, you can go under the world tour, uh, which is actually it would be uh, uh, the CPO World Tour Finals for 2005. And okay. Then just, uh, well, pick your poison. Okay. And and that that gives us that gives a, uh, a a good idea of exactly what we do. Most of this stuff is video. We do audio as well. We have a new project for nothing but audio coming in the future, okay? Which actually, um, we're going to be a little more lax on our audio than we are on our video. Our video is going to be extremely professional, whereas our audio is going to be a little more open, uh, a little more uh, risky, okay, and everything like that. So, um, you know, I mean, we don't just, uh, you know, we're going to be putting together a, uh, a Company of Heroes show here very soon. Like I said, I'm going to be doing uh, work with the Xbox 360 and um, a, uh, a network. I was recently featured on uh, Gameplay HD on the Boom Network, which is uh, uh, for DirecTV. So, yeah. That's cool. Awesome. That's cool. It's, it's interesting that you, you bring up the Xbox 360. Um, um, I don't know if, you, uh, if you've been listening. You probably heard about the petition I put together. Um to have uh, the Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo to be put on Xbox 360, um, and not only to be put on there, but also be arcade perfect and to like totally redo the network protocols they use for the game because the lag makes the game virtually unplayable as it stands right now. Like Hyper Fighting, been a popular download, but unfortunately the lag and the disconnect issue is really serious. You know, but after speaking with Serlin, as, you, as I told you before, he says, "Well, there's technology out there that can get around that. It's just the matter of getting the game companies to, you know, to you know, to endorse it, to to use it, because you know, Capcom or Microsoft are like looking like, hey, that's been a hundred thousand downloads. You know, let's just go ahead and do the same thing over again. You know, and may not make any improvements. 
but you know, I feel like that maybe if you just do a petition, we can just draw some attention, you know, and, and see, and we'll see what happens from there. Right. Well, the problem the problem with any kind of network, I'm sure that all of us have uh, have played games uh, via MAME or via Coax, is you're never ever going to get rid of network traffic. It's going to be impossible. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that PC games have actually taken, uh, have, have, have been in the forefront because you can compensate for the lag in a first person shooter or in a RTS much better than you can a fighting game because fighting games take precise movements, precise timing, uh, and, uh, you know, like I've tried to explain to people who have never played a fighting game is that you can play a fighting game where you're watching the clock and, and you're watching the moves and everything like that, or you can go to that next level, that Neo level, where you're, you're not just playing the game, you're playing the game frame by frame. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Because, uh, like I was saying, because there's been definitely, you know, if, if, if there's like even just, you know, a half second lag, I mean, I make the game, you know, unplayable you know and um although there have been some there have been some um some game there's been some uh, online um software that has been has has some measure of success like i think the one they've been telling me about is the snesz battle um that that works pretty well um i heard a lot of people say a lot of positive things about it and I mean, it was kind of it was kind of funny though because i certainly couldn't elaborate because i was asking him like well, how is this accomplished, you know, but I guess that, uh, that they didn't, he couldn't really elaborate on what that meant, how, how we would be able to compensate for the lag, or at least make the lag not such a big issue as it is with fighting games right now. So maybe it'd be something we'll see in the future here sh uh, shortly. Um, and I mean, I hope that any, in the future they do find a way around it, because, I mean, I can only imagine what we can do if, you know, if fighting games were online, and they were very, you know, they were playable, and it's and I can only imagine a possibility. The only way to get around it is when everybody has fiber. When there's glass into everybody's house, then you'll have virtual lag-free gaming. Yeah, but, well, yeah. I mean, well, or we can have everybody move to Virginia, you know, because I heard that that's where all the fiber optic is right now, like in Virginia and some parts of California have it too. I guess Virginia, all those rich senators over there. Okay. Well, there's Verizon's trying to make the. I think they're doing that in New York too. They have FiOS, Verizon FiOS. How much? How much does that cost per month? You know? I'm. I don't know. I'll check that right now. I'm kind of interested in how much fiber oh. Sorry. It. I know that one thing is it's very expensive to actually, you know, to lay down. It's a lot more expensive than cable and DSL. You know. But, uh, but, you know, I just hope sometime in the future, in my lifetime, <laughs> they'll get around the, the lag issue. So, I mean, that's... All right, guys. Unfortunately, my time is up. I do need to get going. I've got some other projects that I've got to work on. Oh, okay. uh, it was a lot of fun talking to you guys. Again, if you have any questions for me, uh, my email is on tsncentral.com, but it's also harlock at tsncentral.com or mcraft at tsncentral.com. Send me any questions. I know that you know the community probably has a lot of a lot of questions and everything like that for me. But um, just realize that uh, I will respect any decision that you guys come to, and uh, you know, <laughs> how long the fighting games. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks a lot for coming on again. And um, again, I'm sure we're going to be talking again soon. You got it. All right. Well, thanks a lot, man. Hey. Is someone, like, rubbing their microphone on their shirt or something? No. No? It sounds like someone's, like, rubbing their microphone on like, against their shirt. That could be I mean, just yo. chair or something. Huh? That could be someone to share like? something like. Uh -huh. Whiskey. Uh, yo, can you like recap what happened um, the first time that he talked? Because I didn't really hear most of that. I was having trouble connecting. So, I mean, what was his general interest in the show? And 
I mean, where, where did that go? The general interest in what? In this show. How did show. you find out? Uh, in, a, in a show. I don't know how. In this show. Out. He said he, he, um, he listened to an interview I had with Alex Valle. So I was thinking that it might have been um, that interview I just posted up um, with Alex Valle, Alex Wolf, and, um, and Duck. This is like the night, the night, the last night of Evo. Like after the, after everything was done and it was on, the, and they were driving home. And so um, that's why I gather how he heard about the station. But for for certainly uh, for certainty, I don't know. Well, Files, yeah, that was one of the best nights. I'm sorry. Files says it. Nice, dude. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. No, files cost thirty four ninety five for five megabits up and two megabits. I mean, five megabits down, two megabits up. Uh, I pay sixty six. That's for eight megabits down and seven sixty eight up. Mm -hmm. Then, fi then for forty four ninety five is fifteen megabits up, fi uh, fifteen megabits down, two megabits up. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Oh my That's God! It's Joey Styles. Wait, you hear it in the background? Yeah. yeah. I got yeah. good ears. <laughs> Man, I'm tired. I finished my volunteering today. Yay. So I can go to, like, Chinatown on Friday or wherever I want to go to on Friday. Any, anybody okay. have heard any news regarding... Um, Digital life? Digital <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a month. It's month from the day today. Yeah, it's. We're gonna a need month. a countdown or something for that. It's like, did anybody hear any news? <laughs> did anybody hear any news? Bueller, digital life, no. FJs. <laughs> oh man. There's one thing though, TSN cannot stop the FJ movement. <laughs> okay, Judd, why are you thinking about an A trap or, or, or an SFAC stick over A trap? No, well, I mean, like FAC, like an SFAC stick modded, not like just straight out of the box. Yeah. Oh, so you're gonna you would want to mod it though? Like, I I heard that was a bitch to mod though. It is. Well, oh. I've never modded. Oh, that's what I heard. Like, I could be wrong. I'd I'd probably find someone that mod it for me if I yeah, if I can't. Oh, but okay. Have... He's he's actually he's uh. It's not very hard to mod. On not very hard. Matt is actually registered on SRK. That's how he heard about it. Oh, okay. So he saw that sticky and he decided to tune in that night and yeah, and I get you. And here we are. Yeah, yep. here we are. No, yeah, but I, I remember sticky seeing. Sticky on SRK? Huh? Yeah, yeah. I was on radio. It got sticky. I didn't know that it finally got sticky. Yeah, it did. Good shit. Who sticky this? Yeah. Uh, I think Pride or someone. I don't know. It's like it's either Pride or F and J. Full Metal Jaguar. Side bet. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got 60 on uh, FMJ. Okay. I like it. FMJ, like it. and uh, I also like FJs and MJs. <laughs> as well as oh, shit. I remember seeing the thing on MTV. What about spoons? Drink spoons? <laughs> yes, I like those too. Yeah, Kai knows about yeah, Kai knows about about Matt. I know about Matt too. I used to listen to his, I, I still I listen to his shows once in a while. I never heard of him. Yeah. Matt is dope. All day. Kai knows about. No, oh, that's shooting rockets at K. <laughs> oh, it doesn't say he's sticky. Hmm? As long as it's sticky, that sticky causes oh. us to get recognized. True. It's above the combo video thread. So by the way, if anyone listening right now, uh, next tomorrow night is the uh, 
Tomorrow is the interview with the Wolf Brothers, Alex. Yes. Brown. If you got any questions, you better be on the radio show, show or you're gonna. Well, well, you better email it to me. Um, I'll be on. Yeah, I mean Thursday. Uh, looks like we got we only have Yipes on here. Um, I had a good talk with him yesterday, and I asked him an intriguing question about how he feel if he was one of the people like if Evo was to have another big money match. You know, I suggested Yipes versus Umighty, and I wanted to get everybody's opinion. On that. I like Yipes. I, I've I've only I've heard of both of them, but I know more about Yipes. Well, Cause I you know what he 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 admits that it would be a toss up. It would like be a coin flip who would win that. And that's what we want. It's definitely though. a toss up. Here's what it would look like. Both of them would start off with Storm yeah. Sentinel teams. <laughs> Probably Sue would have Santhrax, mm -hmm. and then Yipes would have a uh, Matrix Storm Sentinel uh, Cyclops. And then you would hear, ah, 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 for about 65 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to be getting their meter, you know what I'm saying? And then one of them is going to land a super jump. They're going to call drones, super jump, air dash forward, and hit short. And then that short's going to whip, but the next short is going to hit the person that tries to jump up. It's going to be like lightning attack, lightning attack, super. Lightning strike, lightning strike, super. DHC. That's going to happen for like three matches. Then one of them, the person that's down 2-1 or whatever is going to go to MS, probably MSS. Mm -hmm. Counter out the other guy. And then the other guy is going to go to MSP. And then the other guy is going to lose because he has MSS and he's going to get countered by MSP. Then that guy that lost with MSS is going to go to MSP. And then this is going to be fucking coin tosses for the last six matches. And then I, I goes do, to I'm doing a commentary on the match and I haven't even seen it yet. I'll tell you I mean, that's how it's going to go. Imagine now. we're watching the match and all that shit starts happening. It's like, my God. Yeah, but then out of nowhere, Yipes is going to pull out Morgan Centron and do something totally random. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, look at him. Yeah. You know they're having a low tier MVC2 tournament at NEC? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Madness. <laughs> they say low tier, I they think Cyclops like, should be banned out of a low tier tournament. If you're gonna yeah. ban out everybody else, if you're gonna ban out Spiral and Blackheart and Doom, I think you should ban out Cyclops too. Yeah, wait, they didn't they didn't ban Cyclops? No. Okay. And yeah, I don't think should... you should ban Tron. Just leave her there and don't worry about her assist. <laughs> Duck posted on the thing, it's like Duck is low tier, you all know this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'm, so actually, so you guys think that it might be a that might be a good matchup? Well, that's, so, that's so, East Coast so. versus West Coast. Oh, by the way, we we splitting that money. Uh, FMJ says that it was both him and Pride, so we are splitting that money. He's because FMJ damn chops. <laughs> <laughs> He's sticking the original, and Pride sticky the one that's up there now. I don't know, dude, they, they banned, uh, they banned Magneto, Storm Sentinel, Iron Man, War Machine, Cyclops, Blackheart, Cable, War Captain Machine. Command. Yeah. Captain Command. Spiral, Iron Man, Doctor Doom. War Machine. And they banned, uh, Tron Bond's Projectile Assist. Everything else is allowed. Lame. Base your team I mean, it's not like... Her, 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 her assist does a lot of damage, but it's not like it's really abusable. You have to hit with it, or you can, like punish their assist with it, but, you know, it's not, it's not nearly as good as, like, you know, Psylocke assist, and she's gonna be allowed, you know? I mean, you know, you're gonna take out Tron's assist for it just because it does a lot of damage. It's not like it's invincible. But I just think you should just take out the top six, and then just leave the rest there. Nine? No, no, m more than nine, like ten. You gotta take out Storm Sentinel, Magneto, mm, Cable. You gotta take out Blackheart, Spiral, Doom. Cyclops, Strider, Iron Man, War Machine. Um, is this, are you checking out War Machine just mm -hmm. because of his, because he can do the infinite as well? Yeah, that shit is brain dead. It's the same thing. I mean, if you're gonna take out Iron Man, you might as well take out War Machine. If you don't take out both. If, I mean, don't take out one. Take out both. Wow, this this is pretty cool format. A low tier tournament, the team, 
the Tony director had 56 characters, 50 self, uh, 56 golf balls in a sack, each with like, I guess the character's name on it, and then you would take out three balls, and that would be your team. Ow. <laughs> my, what? My, my, my arcade used to have this this format where like, you could play, you could only play a character one time in the tournament. Ooh. So like, you know, there was a running list of everybody of which characters they played. But like, you know, if you played a match, if you played like say Magneto Cable Sentinel, you wouldn't be able to use Magneto Cable Sentinel anymore in the tournament. They actually had to oh, split oh, up your okay. team, split up your good characters. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And make new teams. Like that forces you to do it. So that means you're gonna be playing with what? Storm. That second round be Storm. Oh, you still need that. I mean, the finals was a guy had guy uh, like was playing Zangief, Blackheart, <laughs> and somebody else. I think I had like Juggernaut, and who knows who else. And the way that it ended, guy has Zangief and he turns to Met Geef, and he's jumping around. And the dude that has Juggernaut, you know, he's like waiting for his opportunity. So he super jumps with Zangief and he's coming down. I'm like, oh my god, like dude, dude does a head crush, right? Mech Zangief mashes out a fucking spinning pile driver. He's in the air. And he's across the screen. And he mashes out the SPD. And it just grabbed up Juggernaut out of the head crush. And fucking tornadoed his ass into the ground. And he won. <laughs> Yo, that's random. <laughs> this shit was incredible. The whole fucking arcade flipped the shit. Like, I, I mean, you know. Dude threw his arms up in the air like Zangief, like, oh, no, no, no. This just was running around crazy. <laughs> oh, shit. That, that's crazy. That's freaking nuts. Imagine if that was an Evo moment. <laughs> Man, I ain't never seen no shit like that. That was that's back crazy. in the day, day. Maybe they like, so like maybe they should do like a um, a team based on a point system, but like the less the less tier that uh, the less I should say the less of a tier your character is, the more points you get for winning. So I mean, like for example, you know, I mean, if you want to do like MSPs one, are three points. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. MSPs are three play, points. I mean, if you play like, you I know, leave that in CVS too. Uh huh. We should leave that one to CVS too. <laughs> the point system, because Sentinel yeah. automatically got to be like six points, man. Sentinel is already like as good as two characters, and he can kill characters for free. He's so good. <laughs> no, but but what I mean by the point system is like, if you like, you will win points if you it, with the more the less the character tier is, the more points you get for the particular one. So like, Sentinel oh like man, one then point. you're gonna bring it in random subjectivity. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I guess it would be some random subjectivity, you know. It, I, don't, I don't think many people will argue with, you know, Sentinel only getting like one point if you play with him, you know. Dude, I mean, is Koboon really that bad? I mean, he sucks, but it's hard as fuck to hit him. You know what I'm saying? I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate him. Because nothing works on him. You, you, there's no, you, I remember mean, I was playing Cable against Koboon, and I could not air Hyper Viper Beam because I could never connect anything off of him. Cause he's like, the fucking that... size of his foot, oh, man. Like you see, you see, to... you see Cable's boot, and then you see like Cobra <laughs> right next to it, and they're the same size. Yeah, dude. You just wait for somebody to like mess up their combo, mash Psylocke, and do your super. You're good. And his, he, plus he got some good priority on this throw. That's what the dude kept on doing. He kept on grabbing. I don't know about that. That shit's garbage. Man, a low-tier tournament will actually be pretty cool to see. <sighs> I like to see what people pull out. I mean, Justin will win that too because he plays probably low-tier more than any of the top players. He plays just a random select square. He can pick whatever he wants. Oh, we had a low-tier tournament at Chinatown Fair one time I was there. I think I beat Justin. That shit was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> what team did you use? Uh, I had, like... Somebody, Psylocke, Tron, maybe Mero. Mm. Mero, Tron. Works. My friend uses Mero. 
Yo, he oh, had Tron man. too. Everybody had Tron. What the fuck? It might not have been a tournament. It might have just been low tier fun time. Low tier fun time. Happy smile time. <laughs> Big smile time. Whatever the fuck that show is. That guy, that guy scares me. No joke. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to put persuade, uh, you know, persuade Yipes, like, you know what, dude, I mean, I know that, you know, you got your family to worry about, but this is, this is Marvel, man, you can't turn your back on Marvel just for family, I mean, you gotta, you know, you gotta have priorities, you know, he says we'll see, we'll see about that, where did everybody go? Hello? I'm still here. Oh, okay. Did you see a video post in the channel with that Yipes match at Evo? Versus Isaac? I haven't seen that. Hold on. I'm going to watch that right quick. <laughs> 